Hi, this is James Gardner, the Cine Tech Geek, and today we're going to look at advanced automation techniques with your cinema um, playback device. As you know, um, you're controlling a lot of devices with your cinema player as it just automates the show, typically a sound processor, curtains, and other devices. This is usually done with contact closures or more commonly today with socket connections, just very raw socket connections between devices. But really, in today's modern development environment, most tools or you tools used to send around messages are using more high-level protocols like HTTP. For example, your web browser now that you're watching me on YouTube is using HTTP or HTTPS to actually control messages going around. And in this situation, we're basically going to emulate a HTTP request from a Dolby IMS 2000 player to an application's backend server. Now, why would you do this? Well, there's some really cool things you could do once you can start sending unique messages from your player based on the automation and the timeline into application server, which may want to do something in your auditorium, like take some pictures, count some people, and you know, do some AI analysis of some sort on what's going on in your auditorium at a particular time of a show. There's some really interesting things you could really do with that sort of technology, and that's, that's why I looked into it. And I wanted to share with you today, because it's just so cool. Anyway, so let's have a quick demo of what actually is going on. So let's switch over to, um, okay, this side of the screen, that's just some logs coming out of the catcher server that I'm developing. And I've made a test endpoint just for this demo. And basically, so it's basically got an Nginx web server, which then pushes it to a Python backend um, compute engine, you know, that does something with the data coming in. And on the other side, I've got an IMS 2000, and I've got three little messages here. I just clicked on one, and you'll see the message came straight into the application server. And it basically said, um, the API, the catcher server, the test endpoint, with an arguments of test equals one, result equals one, and message equals hello. That was sent in, and the Nginx server received that message. Um, and then I've got these other ones. That's using a GET request. And you have to put arguments on the GET request on the, com on the actual address line. Or you can actually, actually, actually make post requests, where you can actually put more, more or more data, because the, 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 the address has a limited length. So if you want to put more data in, you could put it into a POST request or emulate a POST request instead. And in this case, you'll see that um, when I send that in, I'll hit this again, you'll actually see that, the, uh, that uh, one says hello and one says world. And you'll see the um, data coming out of the back end. It says that was the one that was hello, uh, and oh, so hello, and that was the one that had world in the arguments. So there you go. So I'm sending some automation requests directly into a, an application server, usually something that may be used to be taking pictures or telling much more complicated things of what to do. So more advanced automation, doing some more clever things with your cinema. So let's have a quick look at how we do this very quickly. First of all, uh, quickly an anatomy of a HTTP request. Basically, a HTTP request is basically like a socket where you're sending this raw data down, but it's, you have to put all this structure around it. And the generic is you really have to basically put this into the request where you've got these arguments, etc. Right? I'm not going to go too, too deeply, it's not really where I want to go. But if you do that, then you get to um, making these. I'm now back, back on the IMS 2000 and I'm showing you the um, generation of the automation queues, which you can lay into your timelines, etc. And here is the actual um, example. So basically, the device named Elmas Control, basically it's just a raw socket set up to talk to an IP address, which is my application server. And it's just talking in the text type. So basically sending generic te text down a socket. That's all it is. And what I'm doing is I'm actually putting that basic data here into the message. So you know, there's the get, the address, etc., and um, you know, uh, and the IP address, etc. And you've got the slash r slash n for returns. Um, and the secret here to make this to work was the slash big w. Now, what does that mean? Well, a lot of these um, this isn't actually that difficult. The problem is most of these systems, when they send messages via the socket, these they'll, they'll connect, they'll send, and then they'll, they'll disconnect. And, that, and if you do that to a web server, it'll error because you disconnect too quickly. 
So the slash w tells the server to wait one second after it sends the message before it disconnects. And although the server is going to respond, the player is going to ignore the stuff that's coming back, the server will not error because it's responded properly. Most of the time this will not work on a lot of systems unless they do support a delay of some sort of after this message is sent. Otherwise it will most likely confuse the web server. But the introduction of this little slash w for one second delay and slash, slash small w for a hundred millisecond delay after the, the text is sent makes this all possible. Um, and there you go. So that simple text, so if I go to another one, that was a get request. If we go to this one, this will be a post request. You'll see here it says post rather than get. And in the post request, I've actually got the arguments here sent as a block of JSON uh, as the body of the request. So you can basically put anything in there. The only difference or difficulty with sending a post over a get is you actually have to put the length of the message in the, in the you have to calculate the length and put it in as part of the header. Um, I have asked some of all, I've asked Dolby for example, for example, if they could support variables in the send message requests. So hopefully that'll come in the future because then you could also send, for example, the cinema name, the CPL name, the show name, the UUIPs, the UUI, uh, UUIDs of those elements if you want. And then you could track lots of other things and based on the messages coming in from what cinema playing, what content playing at what time code, you could do lots of different things. Uh, but unfortunately, um, variables don't, uh, don't aren't supported yet, but I'm hoping most of the cinema, you know, once the project uh, or the player manufacturers see my sort of videos and uh, take, a, take a note of the sort of real cool features that you can develop with these little advantages. These aren't very difficult to implement, so I hope they'll come up with them in the future. You can do some really cool things. But anyway, uh, let's get, go back to the main screen. Anyway, that was a quick, quick tour of doing some advanced automation with Adobe, but it should be possible with other ones, other players as well, as long as they support that delay. And you can really get up get up to doing some really fancy stuff and do some really good analysis of what's going on in your cinema with these advanced automation tricks. Bye for now, James Gunner, The Senior Tech Geek.